G'day, welcome to This Is Riffin. Today we're going to look at Green Machine by Caius. It's definitely got to be up there as one of the most well-known Caius songs. The whole track's just epic and it's such a fun one to play. There's actually a few little extra bits in there I didn't even know were there, so that was cool to pick up on. I do bang on a bit, but I'm just trying to be as thorough as possible. And this is just so I help out all skill levels while being accurate as possible. And as always, please just note that this is just a guide and it's not going to be 100% correct. As is the case with most Kai songs, you'll just have to tune your guitar to C standard and that goes like this. C. F. A sharp. D sharp. G. And C. But I'll probably just refer to standard tuning being E, A, D, G, B, and E. intro riff or just the main riff is pretty much the same thing throughout the whole song. Um, there's just a few exceptions where Josh changes things just a little bit. So you just start by doing open open on the top string palm muted. And then there's a power chord at fret 7 on the A string. So that's 7 on the A, 9 on the D, and 9 on the G. And so Josh likes to use the three fingers to do that. Um, you can definitely just do a normal power chord as well, like 7 and 9 which will still sound cool. And sometimes I actually use my pinky for the nine and nine as well, and just bar it. And so when you do the power chord, that's actually not palm muted. Just the opens. Which gives it that tough as feel. So you do that four times, and then it's another open open. And it's just this first one where Josh actually whips in something pretty similar to this. So it's a power chord at fret 12 on the A string, being 12 on A, 14 on the D, and a 14 on the G. And so you're gonna strum that once, and then he strums it again, but just doesn't do the G. And so you sort of get this sound. And it's only very subtle. It's probably not exactly what he's doing, but it's just in the first one. slide at fret one or around fret one um, just going up the neck and as long as you get that slide sound in can't go wrong and if you can try and do down strokes only um, which is tougher to do but sounds tougher as well so you'll get a deep burn in your forearm there um, but if you can't yeah it doesn't matter So yeah, either way, can't go wrong. And it's also just worth noting, there's a second guitar just doing a slide from the one um, at the same time, yeah, just to give that extra boost. And then moving forward from there, it's always pretty much gonna be this move here. With this bend being done. And so to do that bend, it's 12 on the top string, 12 on the A, 14 on the D, and 14 on the G. And so it's pretty much just a power chord at fret 12 on the A string, beefed up with fret 12 on top, and then adding in the octave on the G. And so you just strum that once, bend it down, and then bring it back up. And again, if you can't do that 12 on top, um, just do a power chord at A and 12, which also sounds cool. And then you just finish that off the same, open, open, power chord. So I'll just play through the riff that's mostly done throughout the song um, pretty slowly for you. And then to finish 
finish off the verses in the song, uh, Josh just sort of lingers on the power chord at fret seven just to bring in the chorus. So on the album, I can actually sort of hear two ways Josh might do it. So I'm just gonna give you both and then you can choose whichever way you please. The first way is sort of like this. With three zeros just played at the end, which sort of buys you time to get into the power chord for the chorus. So that way I was just playing a few opens on top and then doing a power chord at fret seven. So open on top, seven on the A, nine on the D and nine on the G. Just the same way we've been doing the other ones. The second way I can sort of hear is actually going to five as a power chord just before the chorus kicks in. I can definitely hear something there, but in true Kai's fashion, it's so muddy, it's tricky to decipher exactly what's going on. But it actually sounds like there's something like this going on. Into the chorus. And so for that one, it's sort of similar to the other option, but it's open, open on top. And then the power chord of fret seven, as usual. But the last three is actually five done as a power chord on the A string. So five on the A, seven on the D. Just don't chuck in the open on top there. And so that sort of slides nicely into the chorus to come. So yeah, both of those options work sweet. Just to throw another spanner in the works and annoy you, you could even do octaves potentially instead of power chords here. So seven on the A and a nine on the G. And that just seems to cut through better. So Josh potentially could be doing that. gave an example then of the first chorus and what's sort of a bit tricky about this part is every single time through is just a little bit different and so in a lot of my other Kai's videos I always talk about the feel and just how important it is with Josh's playing and so here's just a great example of that he's sort of riffing around on these power chords but every time it just changes that a little bit but as long as you're hitting these correct power chords um, you should be all hunky-dory so I'm not going to zone in on exactly how many times you should strum each one um, I'll just give you a bit of advice. And so for the first three times, it's gonna be an open power chord on the top string. So open on top, two on the A and two on the D. And so you're trying to bar the two and the two there with one finger. By all means, you could use two fingers. Or you could just do a power chord um, a normal way. So open on top and two on the A instead of adding the octave. And that can be the same for all the power chords to come. You don't have to beef it up with that extra note, which hopefully makes sense. So you're gonna play the open a few times. And a good way to try and think of it is try and strum it almost like how John's singing it in a way. going to go to three on the A string as a power chord. So three on A, five on D, and five on G. And so I'm just going to do the way Josh generally plays his power chords with three fingers. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, I might even just use my pinky. Um, you're going to strum that around five or six times before sliding to fret five as a power chord on the A. So five on the A, seven on the D, and seven on the G. And you'll do that about four times each time. With a slide going up to 10 on the A string as a power chord. So 10 on the A, 12 on the D, and 12 on the G. That's three times there. And so I'll just play through that roughly how it goes with the song. And so as I mentioned before, I'm sort of picturing how John sings it, which sort of helps me strum it in time, in a way. Second time, sort of similar, just with a few extra strums thrown in here and there. Third round's just that little bit different again.
with a feel sort of like that. But then it's the fourth one that's just that little bit different and it's just because of the tail end and you're gonna strum a few extra threes and fives. <laughs> So I may have even added in a few extra strums there in my example, which again just helps me stress the importance of the feel of how to play the chorus. And so through this part here, it's just open again on the top string as a power chord. And then you're gonna to go to three, and this one here has about seven strums. With a slide going to fret five as a power chord, and this time there's around five strums slide up to 10 and just to finish it off it goes 10 10 9 he just whips that in there which actually sort of ties in well to the next section to come so there's most likely two guitar tracks going on as normal and each chorus is just that little bit different After that first chorus around the 116 mark, you're coming back to that tough riff again. Do everything else the same, except it's just gonna finish off the ending a little different um, compared to the other times. So you're gonna slide from seven to 10, 10 as a power chord on the A string, and then a nine on the A as a power chord. So you get this sort of snap ending, which sort of links together with the chorus, as I mentioned before. So I'll play through that slowly for you. So the bend is always, and then the slide to the 10, 10, 9. And you're gonna play that through twice. Around the 209 mark, you're just doing that verse main riff again, which helps lead into the breakdown lick. Around the 214 mark, we get this sweet little breakdown part, and it's gonna start on fret 12 on the top string. If you can, try and use your third finger, because you're gonna to go to 10 on the A after that and it helps to use your first finger for that. So you can go 12, 10, just to allow you to play it a little bit quicker. And you're gonna do that move twice. So 12, 10, 12, 10. And then it's just this little bit here, which again is really tricky to hear exactly what Josh is doing, but it does sound like it's a 12, 14 slide and then another 12, 14 as well. The two tracks makes it a little muddy as always, but that sounds pretty much like what he's doing. And then it's a 12 on the D, followed by 15, 14, 12 on the G. And this little bit would actually help if you use your third finger for 15, second finger for 14, and your first finger for 12. And again, that's gonna allow you to play it faster. And then you can even just leave your first finger on 12 um, because you're going to do that move five times. Four, five, and then you're going to play 12 just as a vibrato a few times on the G. And so that's played around eight times, but you don't have to do it exactly like that. With a slide at the end. So I'll just play through that a bit slow for you. vibrato sections going on there's actually another track doing this which I didn't even know was there but um, it's just worth noting so it's 12 on the G four times and then four bends of the 12 which is definitely a bend that Josh likes to throw in here and there throughout a lot of his tracks and then to finish it off you're back at our tough move again with the palm muting on the top string is open and then the seven power chord on the A string. And then you 
finish on that fifth strum with that power chord. So one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> so around the 224 mark, Josh is doing a sort of similar thing to the main riff, but it's just a bit extra going on. And so you're gonna just do the usual tough riff with the bends. You do that again with the bends. And then this time you open it up with the bends. And then you get to this sort of section, which was a bit tricky to decipher. Um, so I'm gonna give you two options here just to annoy you as always. The first one's a really quick. Which is super sick to play, sounds tough as hell. It's just hard to exactly know what Josh is doing there. So the alternative could be this. Which also sounds wicked. And so choose whichever way you want to there. So I'll just go from the 230 mark where it opens up on that power chord at fret seven. And so you can start off with two opens. And this doesn't have to be precise, but it's open, open. Open up on the seven power chord with the bend into either of these. Or <laughs> Once again, there's another little part going on that I had no idea was there. And so the other guitar track at the 232 mark is just doing that bend that we normally always do at the end of the tough riff, or the main riff. So 12, 12, 12, 14, 14. And so you're gonna bend that twice. And then something like this is going on where Josh is bending 14 and 14 on the D and the G. And you're gonna do that five times. And so you can bend that up or down, either way. But yeah, that's just me getting fussy and that's definitely there. And then finally, to take out the song, there's just two ways you can attack it here. And it's just for the last chord right at the end. So the first way is like this. Or the second guitar track actually does something similar to this. So both ways are still just open, open. With the power chord at seven. But then you're gonna do a slide. And that first one was just an open power chord on the top string. So it's a quick move with the slide straight to that power chord. And then the second one's something similar to this where it's the same thing again. With the slide. And then you're gonna to go to 14 and 14 on the A and the D. Try and bar it there if you can, with an open on top as well thrown in. And you can bend the 14s get that sort of sounds which is cool well i hope that helps you out with the song it's such a banger um any questions please leave a comment below and i'll catch you soon